Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day. And today's problem is lucky numbers and it is an easy level problem. So it says that we have been given the process of devising lucky numbers, right? So let's say we have an infinite set of integers starting from one going till infinity, right? Now in the first uh, iteration, we have to delete every second number, right? That is the every multiple of 2. So if we delete every multiple of 2, we are going to get this particular new set. Now in the next step, we have to delete every number that is a multiple of 3. And you have to remember that it is not the absolute multiple, but rather the positions which are the multiple of 3. Right. Similarly, in the first case, initially the multiples of 2 and the number which were at the positions of multiples of 2 were exactly the same. But since we have deleted some elements from between, now these two definitions will become different. So we have to delete the numbers which are at positions multiples of 3, right? And then we will get a new set of integers. Again, from that set of integers, we have to delete numbers which are at those positions which are multiples of 4 and then 5 and then so on. Now, if this process continues indefinitely and there is any integer that does not get deleted due to the above process is called lucky. Right. Now we have been given an integer n and we have to find whether that number is lucky or not. If it is lucky, we have to return true. Otherwise, we have to return false. So they have also given us some examples 5 and 19. So 5 this is not a lucky number and 19 is a lucky number. Right. So let us first discuss these two examples. I'm not going to discuss the time complexity first because this problem is just about finding the right time complexity of the approach you are thinking. Right. So let us first discuss the sample test cases. So they have said that 5 is not a lucky number. Let us see how. So 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. If these 5 numbers are written like this. First of all, all the numbers which are at those positions, which are multiple of 2 will get deleted. So these two numbers will get deleted. Right. The new set will be 1, 3 and 5. So 5 is now at a position which is the multiple of 3. That is why it is going to get deleted. Right. Now let us discuss for 19, 1. Now, first of all, all the numbers which are at multiples of 2 will get deleted. So this one, this one, all the multiples of 2 are getting deleted, right? This is the first iteration. Now in the second iteration, my new set will be 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15, 17 and 19. Now all the numbers which are in the positions which are multiples of 3 are going to get deleted. So this is at position 3, then this is at position 6. And this is at position 9, right? Now I have 1, 3, 7, 9, 13, 15 and 19. Now I have to delete multiples of 4. So this is at position 4. Now there is no position 8. So I am just going to continue 1, 3, 7, 13, 15 and 19. Now I am going to delete multiples of positions of 5. So this is 5, right? So this is 6. So this is not going to get deleted. Now 1, 3, 7, 13 and 19 are remaining. Now I have to delete multiples of positions of 6. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Now you see that the position of 19 is 5. From now onwards, all of the numbers after 19 are going to get deleted because the first position will be 6, then 7, then 8, then 9 and then 10 and so on. This 5 position will never get touched now, right? So this is how we know that 19 is not going to get deleted. So from this example, you must have observed one thing that if let's say I'm going to delete multiples of x, if my x becomes greater than my n value, that means the number is a lucky number. So what we can try to do is we can try to simulate the whole process. But before simulating, we need to confirm that the simulating process would work under the correct time complexities. So if the value of n is 10 to the power 5, we need to find a suitable time complexity which would work in this particular range. Now I know that if this particular value of x becomes greater than n, I can just break out of the simulation and I would definitely know whether the given number is a lucky number or not. Right. So let us see how the simulation process works. Initially, let's say the value of x is 2 and I have a value n with me. Right. So let's say this n is not a multiple of 2, right? Now you will see that the, that the value n will get shifted some places to the left, right? And what are those places? So let's say we have these values 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. If I'm talking about 5, 
and in the first iteration these two will get removed so 5 will get two places shifted towards the left so 1 3 and 5 like this earlier 5 was at position 5 now it is at position 3 so that was a difference of 2 right that is why it has come to position 3 so how do i calculate this difference so this difference will be equals to the number of positions present between 1 to 5 right so that i can calculate by n by 2 right so now the new value n will be n minus n by 2 and this is going to be n by 2 itself now if my x becomes equals to 3 you will realize now i have only n by 2 positions now from this n by 2 i need to find how many times will this number shift to the left right so from this particular n by 2 i am going to subtract n by 6 why because there are n by 2 values and i want to find the number of positions which are multiples of 3 so i want to divide this number by 3 that would be n by 6 right if i subtract this number you will realize it is 2n by 6 and 2n by 6 is essentially n by 3 right now let's say the value of x is equals to 4 right so n by 3 minus n by 4 into 3 let me write it also n by 4 into 3 so this is going to be n by 3 minus n by 12 right now this is essentially going to be 3n by 12 and that is n by 4 right so now in the next step let me just make one more step if i have x is equals to 5 i have initially n by 4 and i will have to subtract n by 4 into 5 like this so this will be n by 4 minus n by 20 right so this is going to be 4 by 20 and which is essentially n by 5 so now i can get the relation between the value of x and the value of n so if my x if my x is equal to 5 my n has transformed to n by 5 now i had this initial relation that x should be greater than n so if my x has transformed so this is going to be x dash and this is going to be n by x dash right so essentially this is x dash whole square should be greater than n so this is the condition when i am going to exit from the loop if i want to write a condition for how long should i stay inside the loop it should be x square should be less than equal to n so i have got a very very rough estimation of how many iterations i need to make right i had this initial idea that while x is less than equal to n i have to continue my loop but through the calculation that i have made i know that i need to make only root n number of calculations because x square is less than equals to n so x should be less than equals to root n right this is my final idea and from this i know that i can simulate the process and the simulation will work in approximately root n time so this was all about this particular problem now let me show you the code so you see what I've done is I've initialized my x with equals to 2. Now I have a while loop where x is less than equals to n is the main condition. Now if n is a multiple of x, I'm just going to return 0. Otherwise, I'm going to subtract all the multiples of x from here. Right. So n minus is equals to n by x. This is going to remove all the multiples of x from the current series and n is going to get shifted to the left the required amount of times. Now I have to also increase the value of x. And if at the end, I am able to exit this particular loop without triggering this particular condition, that means my current number is a lucky number and I can just return true at the end. So this was all about this particular problem. Let me just quickly submit this and show you. So you see this passes all the test cases and the solution is absolutely correct. I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution. If you guys did, consider dropping a like on this video and don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this particular video really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you and it will be able to reach much more people like you who want to keep solving new problems. So I see a lot of people who watch these videos are not subscribed yet. In case you are one of them, then definitely consider subscribing. It's always free of cost and you can always subscribe if you don't find the videos interesting later. So share this channel with your friends and until the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe, bye bye.